So if you're a real crime fanatic, you might be acquainted with the Scott Peterson case. In 2004, Scott was convicted of murdering his wife, Lacey Peterson, and their unborn son after initially reporting Lacey's disappearance to the police. Scott first reported his pregnant wife missing on Christmas Eve 2002 and claimed that she disappeared while walking their dog. At the time, Scott told detectives that he had been out on his boat at the Berkeley Marina in Richmond, California to go fishing, about 90 miles from the couple's home. Detectives immediately started a search, saying that they were thrown by Scott Peterson's behavior. At the time of her disappearance, Lacey was approximately seven and a half months pregnant with the couple's son. Sadly, on April 13, 2003, the remains of the male fetus washed ashore on a San Francisco Bay beach. And the following day, a woman's decomposing torso was discovered near the marina about a mile away from where the baby was found. It is soon discovered that Scott has been having an affair with a woman named Amber Frey at the time of his wife's murder. Now join me while we examine the most bizarre things about this case. The first thing about this case is that Lacey Peterson did not tell anyone about her marital problems. Now from the outside, Lacey and Scott Peterson reportedly appeared to have the perfect marriage, with their first baby on the way. However, the truth was apparently much more sinister. During Scott's murder trial, prosecutors exposed his affair with mistress Amber Frey and alleged other infidelities during the marriage as well. And as reported, if Lacey knew that her husband was cheating, she did not confide in any of her closest friends. So it's either she didn't know about it or she knew about it but didn't want to tell anybody about it. Next thing is no one knew that Scott Peterson had a new boat. So on top of Lacey not mentioning anything about any infidelities to any of her friends, she also didn't even mention to anyone that he actually had a new boat. He has a 14-foot aluminum boat that her husband bought weeks before her disappearance. A question people had for the trial was, was Scott Patterson actually a sex addict? So during Scott's trial, prosecutors painted him as a sex addict, pointing to both his extramarital affairs as well as other behaviors that indicated he had certain appetites. One of Scott's relatives seemingly backed up the claim, telling Fox News that he has sexual problems and he has a need to sleep with other women. Scott's family also alleged that Lacey was aware of her husband's cheating, but that she had forgiven him. Scott's mother has told relatives and friends that she knew her daughter-in-law was aware of at least one affair and that one time she saw the couple arguing over it. So a satellite TV employee actually testified that 15 days after after Lacey went missing, Scott began ordering explicit adult material, starting with the Playboy channel and gradually to more hardcore attractions. However, Scott tried to conceal these subscriptions from investigators and reportedly abruptly canceled the X-rated satellite channel right in front of the eyes of one of the cops in the house. Another thing is Scott Peterson's arrest featured multiple red flags. So when police searched Scott Peterson's car after Lacey Peterson's body was discovered, they found a slew of suspicious and strange items that seemed to suggest that Scott may have been planning on fleeing the country. They found a rope, knives, four cell phones, camping supplies, and children books. One of the detectives told ABC News that the guy had like fourteen dollars to $15,000 cash on him and his brother's ID. Scott was also in possession of over 200 sleeping pills, a gun, and a dagger. He also reportedly had a bounty of new purchased camping equipment in the vehicle. Even more disturbing though was the fact that Scott had a map to the workplace of his mistress and approximately 10 Viagra tablets in the car, along with a selection of money, weapons, medication, and a shovel. Scott had also attempted to change his appearance and had blonde hair at the time of his arrest. Scott Peterson's friend, Mike Richardson, told him that Scott's hair color could have changed when he was swimming in a friend's pool and it got bleached. Another thing that threw people off was that he actually went to a Christmas party with his mistress. So in public, Scott Peterson appeared to be a devastated husband that wanted to locate his pregnant wife, Lacey, after her disappearance. However, Scott's actions in the lead up to her disappearance told a very different story. So according to ABC News, Scott's alibi was potentially damaging. Not only did he go fishing the morning of Christmas Eve while Lacey cooked and cleaned for a brunch that they were having the next day, he was also seemingly pretty brazen about his affair prior to his wife's disappearance. They said that there are pictures of Peterson and his girlfriend Amber Frey at a Christmas party together, suggesting that Scott was quite publicly seeing Frey before his wife went missing. Ten days before Lacey went missing, the photograph evidence was even used against Scott in court. The prosecution showed photos of Frey and Peterson at the Christmas party in mid-December. That same night, Lacey Peterson went to the holiday party alone. On December 15th, the day after the party, Frey sent Peterson a Christmas card with a picture of her and her daughter. However, Scott reportedly mailed the sweet card back to Amber soon after. 
Did you know that they attempted to blame Lacey Peterson's death on a satanic cult? So Scott Peterson's legal team attempted to find reasonable doubt that the husband was involved in Lacey Peterson's disappearance and murder. One such avenue that Scott's defense lawyers pursued was the possibility that Lacey had been kidnapped by a satanic cult operating in the area, and that they're the ones that caused her death. And if you're thinking this suggestion sounds a little far-fetched, you are probably not alone. People across America are going to want to believe that someone other than the husband is responsible for this gruesome death. While the idea that a satanic cult may have kidnapped the pregnant Lacey, it is very unusual, and it wasn't well received in court. Scott Peterson also told his mistress that his wife was dead before she was really even dead if that makes sense. While Scott Peterson's mistress, Amber Frey, received a lot of backlash for having gotten involved with the married man, who turned out to be a murderer, it would appear as though Frey had no idea Scott was still married to Lacey when she started dating him. Jurors learned that Scott Peterson had lied about being married in order to date Amber and continue a relationship with her. In an interview, Amber revealed that Scott had initially told her that he was single and had never been married. However, a few weeks into their courtship on December 9th, 2002, Scott lied again when he told Amber that he was a widow and that he lost his wife but regretted lying to her about it. As Amber recalled, she said she didn't feel it was appropriate to pry on how his wife died just because he was so emotional, but what she didn't know was Lacey was still very much alive at the time and Amber had no idea about the extent of Scott's lies. But it was definitely chilling that Scott called himself a widow before he actually did murder his wife. Another thing Scott Peterson did was call his mistress from a candlelight visual for his wife. So Scott Peterson lied to his mistress Amber Frey about way more than his relationship status. After Lacey Peterson disappeared, Scott's behavior reportedly became more erratic and Scott began telling Amber that he was traveling when he was in fact still nearby. Hauntingly, during one phone call conversation, which took place as loved ones gathered for the candlelight visual in honor of Lacey, Scott Peterson told Frey that he was celebrating New Year's Eve in Paris on a business trip. The fact that Scott could tell such elaborate lies while attending a visual for his then missing wife is not only bizarre but is pretty downright creepy. Scott even admitted some of the deceit to Amber and said, I have not been traveling during the last couple of weeks. I have lied to you. Amber pressed Scott about the lie he told about being a widow and asked him, why did you tell me it would be the first holidays without her? However, he refused to give her a real answer for why he reportedly said that. But another important evidence in this case was the Peterson's dog. So Scott Peterson's defense team attempted to use and exonerate the suspect by using his dog because at the time of Lacey's disappearance, Scott claimed that his pregnant wife had been walking their dog, Mackenzie, a golden retriever. Mackenzie was discovered by a neighbor, Karen, who testified that she saw the Peterson's golden retriever standing in the street, its leash attached, but its owner nowhere in sight. On Christmas Eve 2002, the day Lacey went missing, she returned the dog to the Peterson's backyard and shut the gate. Lacey's friends and family have long disputed the narrative that Lacey would have walked the dog. At around eight months pregnant, she was reported to experience fatigue and exhaustion, and one of her friends testified and said every time she would start to do something, she would have to stop and rest so it didn't make sense for her to actually go and walk her dog, especially that late at night. Another thing is Lacey Peterson's body was also dismembered. That's one of the most disturbing parts of the case regarding Lacey Peterson's murder was the state of the pregnant woman's body. Her body wasn't found until four months later, and not only were the mother and the baby found near the location of where Scott had told police he went fishing on the day of Lacey's disappearance, but both corpses have been significantly tampered with or damaged while submerged in water. Jurors also felt that Scott Peterson had no emotion during the trial. So that means it would appear that Scott didn't endear himself to the jury during this trial, meaning that he made a very bad impression with some of the jurors deciding his fate. The fact that Scott never spoke during his own trial to defend himself or give evidence also impact the impression the jury developed on the murder suspect. This trial took place over a six month period and he was pretty much silent throughout this whole trial, which threw up some red flags. But let me know in the comments what you think about this case. If I forgot to mention any important facts about this case, let me know in the comments. That way everyone else can read it. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like these, let me know what case you guys want me to do next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.